a national pro wrestling team? The story of Cambodia's Olympic hopefuls that cross-trained in the professional sport. Welcome to the unique case of the first ever national pro wrestling team and the mystery of its sudden disappearance. There are plenty of examples of amateur wrestlers turning pro following a successful career on the amateur mats. There are even examples of wrestlers who competed for their national team in international competition who would eventually give pro wrestling a shot. Two examples that quickly come to mind are Kurt Angle and Jeff Cobb. However, as far as I'm aware, there has never been any examples of a national pro wrestling team. That is, a team of a nation's best wrestlers representing their country in the professional game. Well, except for one time. Let me explain. It all started in December 2006 in Phnom Penh, the capital and largest city in Cambodia, and also the location of the Cambodian National Wrestling Team's headquarters. After seeing the popularity of American wrestling programs in Cambodia, including WWE SmackDown, Vath Chamroon, Cambodia's first ever Olympic wrestler and the Secretary General of Cambodia's National Wrestling Team at the time, saw dollar signs. As Emily Lodish reported on March 23, 2007 for the Cambodia Daily, Vath Chamroon developed an idea over the course of several years that would finally be put into practice in December 2006. The wrestling moves that the Cambodian fans love to watch on television could easily be replicated by the national amateur team's wrestlers, Vath Chamroon believed. Plus, a foray into the pro wrestling business would make the national team wrestlers stars and could make the program additional money, an opinion shared by Cambodian national team coach Hawk Chang Kim. December 2006 would mark the start of the ambitious Cambodian pro wrestling program. 16 wrestlers, including 10 men and 6 women, were part of the original group to incorporate pro wrestling training into their daily workout sessions with the national team. Part of this training included work focused on the wrestlers' acting skills, led by Vath Chamaroon. The acting portion of training would last for 10 to 15 minutes each day, with the goal to make the wrestlers more believable and focus on learning acting skills, such as how to better portray anger on their face. Vath Chamroon also shared some pro wrestling insider secrets with the trainees, tricks of the trade that he claimed to have picked up from Japanese pro wrestlers while visiting North Korea in the 1990s. With North Korea having a strongly established wrestling program and Cambodia sending a wrestler to the Olympics for the first time, Along with the positive relationship that exists between the two nations, Chamroon spent time training in North Korea for the 1996 Olympic Games that were held in Atlanta, Georgia. This timetable seems to line up with the New Japan slash WCW Collision in Korea event, which took place in April 1995. It's entirely possible that Vath could have been on hand for the event, possibly with access to New Japan talent, especially if he was training with the North Korean Olympic amateur team at that time. By March of 2007, Cambodia's new pro wrestlers had competed in at least two events at Olympic Stadium in Phnom Penh. I haven't been able to track down any footage of these events, or any more information on them, but it's possible that they're part of a kickboxing card or amateur wrestling tournament, events that the pro style had been featured on before. October 1st, 2008 would mark the first time the national pro wrestling team would head out on the road for a performance. This came in the form of an event in Vihir Suar Village in Kandal Province as part of the Pichum Ben Festival celebrations. Six wrestlers were on hand at the show, with wrestlers Giant Vin and Chab Loon being mentioned as part of a report by the Phnom Penh Post on the bouts. The wrestlers were set for another event at Olympic Stadium in November 2008. Competing on the undercard of a Cambodian Bokator, which is a traditional form of Cambodian kickboxing event, at their familiar stomping grounds of Olympic Stadium, 
as per the Phnom Penh Post. 2009 was a landmark year for Cambodia's pro wrestlers. That year, the wrestlers took to the beach in Sihanoukville for a live in-ring performance. This event would serve as the creation of a television program that would air on Cambodian local television. This is the only televised event I was able to track down featuring these wrestlers outside of the 2010 Water Festival, which I'll touch on later. I was unable to track down a date for this taping other than the year and location, and as for the wrestlers involved, the only one that I feel comfortable confirming is Giant Vin, who had been recognized numerous times in all press reports on Cambodia's wrestlers as being by far the largest wrestler of the group. This nearly half hour of programming features some vignettes with the wrestlers, one of Cambodia's female wrestlers in action, and a six-man tag team match that served as the main event. Giant Vin once again played a big role, this time dominating throughout a large portion of the main event before being pinned. Getting the Cambodian pro wrestlers on television was a major goal set by Vath Chamroon and Hawk Chang Kim when starting the program. Accomplishing it after just three years must have felt pretty rewarding and would help set the table for their biggest event yet. But it also makes what happened after this major event all the more unexplainable and mysterious. So the stage was now set for this big time event. This came over a two day period in November 2010, from the 20th to the 21st, at Ban Um Tok, the Cambodian Water Festival. The Water Festival is an annual celebration to mark the end of monsoon season and consistently draws millions each year to the Cambodian capital of Phnom Penh. The Water Festival show came with some of the biggest opportunities for Cambodian pro wrestling. The wrestling portion of the Water Festival was included as part of a concert presented by the company Nokia. A big audience turned out to watch the wrestling action, which for the first time included some foreign talent competing along with the Cambodian wrestlers. Despite the Cambodian National Olympic Committee's frantic attempts, they were unable to bring John Cena to the event. However, an experienced crew of Joshi wrestlers consisting of Kyoko Inoue, Ayako Sato, Kiko Aono, and Kaioru Itu were in action on the show, getting a great reaction from the Cambodian fans on hand in their match that opened the wrestling portion of the concert. One big change for the Cambodian wrestlers heading into this event was that their group finally had a promotion name to hold all of their events under. Pro wrestling by the Cambodian crew would now be taking place under the banner of Cambodia Champion Association Wrestling Entertainment, also known as CCAWE. Not only would this event officially establish the CCAWE as an active pro wrestling company, it would also see the CCAWE crown their first ever champion and Cambodia's first ever pro wrestling champion. But more on that in just a little bit. The action from the Nokia concert was caught in full and lives on today on YouTube. It's actually pretty tough to track down, but we saved everything from the festival in a YouTube playlist called Cambodian Pro Wrestling, which you can easily access from the WrestleMap YouTube account. We also grabbed some clips, which you can see here in our video. At this point, the CCAWE crew was down to six Khmer Pro Wrestlers. Giant Vin appears to have hung up his boots by this point, leaving Cambodia without their biggest and most recognizable talent. The wrestlers in action at Waterfest included Nuth Sofal, who was known as the Copper Mouse, Dun Sorsav, who was known as the Rock Garuda, Chap Lorne, who was known as Iron H, Thin Vibal, Thin Vikthet, and Ingun Kimhang. And one of those three wrestled as High Man. After two days of competition, the CCAWE Championship was on the line in a four-way elimination match between the Copper Mouse, the Rock Garuda, Iron H, and High Man. Wrestlers were eliminated from the match when they were pushed out of the ring, either over the top rope, under the bottom rope, through any of the ropes, and touched the floor. That is, until the final fall. 
The Rock Garuda withstood a brutal-looking powerbomb that landed him on his head and was able to clinch the CCAWE championship after drilling a solid Dominator slash Rochambeau. The Rock Garuda would celebrate his title victory as pyrotechnics went off, creating one of the few iconic images of Khmer Pro Wrestling that still lives on, at least on the internet, to this day. Unfortunately, on the third day of Bon Um Talk in 2010, tragedy struck. A stampede on the bridge between Phnom Penh and Diamond Island caused the untimely death of 351 festival goers and the injury of 395 more. The wrestling events had wrapped up by this point, and it's unclear if any of the wrestlers or fans that attended the wrestling show were involved in this tragedy. Over the course of the two-day wrestling event at the Nokia concert, the fan turnout was solid, as was the reception from the crowd, and the pyro in production looked like it would belong at any other pro wrestling event around the world. The action in the ring was passable as well, with the four-plus years of training up to this point paying off with the results on display at Water Festival. The Water Festival and the reception it received, as well as the major love Cambodian fans had for WWE at this time, made it clear that there was a market for pro wrestling in Cambodia, which makes the follow-up to the Water Festival and the future of Cambodian pro wrestling even more confusing. It kind of just disappeared without a trace. Following the Rock Garuda's CCAWE championship win, any mention of Khmer Pro Wrestling completely disappeared from the Cambodian press. One article published as a follow-up to the Water Festival event questioned who the Rock Garuda would defend his title against first, but it doesn't appear as if that title defense ever happened. Another article published in 2014 discussed how Cambodia used to have its own pro wrestling. So what happened? Unfortunately, it remains a complete mystery. I've reached out to several people to try and get an explanation or a recap of what went down. I've talked with members of the Cambodian press that covered the national pro wrestling team, reached out to the national amateur wrestling program, tracked down some of the wrestlers involved and reached out to them and even attempted to speak directly with the father of the whole program and Cambodia's first ever Olympic wrestler, Vath Chamroon. The press contacts were the most helpful, assisting with connecting me to multiple people, all of which had no idea what happened to the program. None of the former pro wrestlers that I reached out to responded to my inquiries. I was able to get in direct contact with Vath Chamroon and even got a brief reply and introduction but any inquiry into the pro wrestling program went unanswered. Of all the research I've done, everything I've read indicates that there is a very solid fan base for pro wrestling in Cambodia. It's unfortunate that the only national pro wrestling team I've ever encountered couldn't make it work in a country with a hunger for pro wrestling. Following the disappearance of the national pro wrestling team, Pro Wrestling would return to Cambodia in late 2019 in the city of Siem Reap for a short-lived run from Chinese pro wrestling company Oriental Wrestling Entertainment. Unfortunately, the run in Cambodia would only last until June 2020, and OWE would go out of business shortly after. If you or anyone you know has any information on the fate of Cambodia's national pro wrestling program or any other details on pro wrestling in Cambodia, please reach out to WrestleMap by email at WrestleMap at gmail.com.